Hello, investors, and welcome to yet another edition of 18 Minutes with 180 Markets. Friends, we certainly know overall market conditions have changed, and we are constantly getting the question, what are we doing? Well, I can tell you one of the investment criteria we are certainly doing is paying attention to risk and reward. That's right. We understand that we are not always going to get everything right. But what we want to understand is that when we do make an investment and it works, it really works, where it can be three, four, five X of your money. And that's why I'm excited today to talk with Mark Stowell of Southern Hemisphere Mining, because Southern Hemisphere is a company that you must know if you want to go big elephant hunting. And here to talk all about it, Mark, welcome. Hello, Greg. Thank you. Excellent. Hey, Mark. Everybody's got a story. In a couple of minutes, can you just tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. Look, background, I was in corporate finance, um, chartered accountant by trade, um, went out of my own in, in the mining exploration business uh, fairly young in my early 30s. And um, initial projects were in Africa and the Congo, which were pretty successful there. We, we found some uh, good projects and uh, they turned into good mines. And uh, subsequently worked in, in many countries around the world, Turkey as well. We had some successful operations there. And uh, now I'm with Southern Hemisphere in uh, Chile, South America. Yeah. Hey, Mark, I'm just curious about what draws you to being overseas, number one. And number two, uh, maybe without getting out of order, what are some of those learnings that you can take you with you to Southern Hemisphere because you are based in Chile now? Um, look, what took me to Chile is, uh, I was invited to join the board a few years ago. The, the, the projects were, were advanced, but had kind of stagnated and, um, you, I've been involved in the copper industry for many years, over 20 years. So we, we understand that I brought one of my partners in the business, a, a very good geologist who's worked on a number of deposits with me. Uh, he spent the last 12 months in, in Chile working on this thing on the ground. And um, it, it, is, it, it truly is a, a large play for a small company that, that is very, very interesting. And uh, we'll see this thing go places over the next, uh, next few years. Excellent. Hey, Mark, and specifically with Southern Hemisphere, as you said, you're based in Chile, your projects are... Can you just tell for the audience, I think that they are somewhat familiar with copper in Chile, but can you just give a little bit of a background? Because it is, I believe, the home of the biggest mine in the world and certainly world-class uh, size projects. Chile is is one of those rare countries where it's, it's geology A for copper. Um, six or seven of the biggest copper mines in the world are in Chile. Every major copper miner is in Chile, um, you know, from BHP, Rio downwards. The biggest copper mine in the world is owned by Rio and uh, BHP. And all of these copper companies are, uh, have identified the, uh, the massive copper shortage that is coming up because of the, the, the uh, EV and uh, renewables revolution that can't happen without copper. So... Uh, there's been very few new discoveries, and uh, this one that we've got in Southern Hemisphere is likely to be a part of that uh, solution. Yes. And, you know, speaking of that supply demand imbalance, and as you said, you've worked in copper for many years, there, if you look at pretty much any analyst model, there is a significant supply demand imbalance, and it's not going to be solved by a really small project. And that, I guess, leads us to Southern Hemisphere. And, you know, and your Yawin Copper project. Can you just talk to us a little bit about it? Sure. Um, look, it's it's uh, it's it's very large for a small company. We're we're up to six hundred and eighty thousand tons of copper metal in resource that's already defined, and scope to increase that substantially to you know where we could be looking at something that's got a production profile of thirty years, and you know around the 40, 50,000 tons of copper metal equivalent a year. So, you know, that's what the big companies are looking for. 
uh, um, the geology and the and the work that we're doing is is confirming the potential for that for it to get to that scale and we're, we're you know we're a third to a half of the way along towards that um open pitable uh chile's dominate is it, chile is is large low-grade copper mines and this is exactly what it is it's in a good location uh low altitude so year-round easy to easy logistics and um and the endowment is is quite interesting you know it's fantastic so um we're we're marketing this project to uh to bigger players we've we've started to unlock the, the potential and um yeah that's that's where we're headed in the next 12 months that's great and you already have as you mentioned there six hundred eighty thousand tons yes that's right um the, some of the, the intersections have been spectacular you know like 440 meters at you know 0.75 percent copper and um yeah, the scale of these things is is off the charts when you compare them to the to uh, what you what you often see in the in the smaller higher grade deposits in Australia. Right, and I could certainly see why you're so attracted to it. So, Mark, obviously, we invest always for the future. Can you just tell us what does the next twelve months look like for Yawen? What would you? What are the activities up and coming? We've uh, we're doing a lot of surface work here to to firm up the uh, targets for open pit potential expansion. Um, we're also doing a lot of reprocessing of magnetics and induced polarization work that's been done in the past. So um, reanalyzing that with, with the, uh, the relogging of the drill core to look for the deeper targets, which really can kick this project into uh, the next stage. Um, yeah, you know, the, the magnetics and and some of the IP work is is showing considerable promise for some of these areas. Um, so, a really interesting year ahead. And uh, as I said, we're we're also marketing to bigger players because it it justifies one of these bigger companies coming in. Yeah, certainly, and I want to discuss that too. But you know, coming back to maybe so in the first half of twenty twenty three, it's amazing to think that twenty twenty two is already you know, nearly in the books here. Um, yeah. But so is there going to be actually drilling or is it more the reprocessing of this work? What should investors look for in terms of the headlines? The, look, the headlines is is more targets that we're working up. Um, drilling, we may drill some of the better ones, but it, it really comes down to where's the best money spent at the moment is is adding to the, uh, the list of targets here. And, um, you know, developing this to where the the drilling success will be considerable um you know these things are expensive to drill and they right. they, they need a major in there um so the the drilling is a, is a part of it but it's it's not everything to do with it at this point and um in terms of copper endowment you know we're we're the cheapest one of the cheapest copper stocks in the world given the endowment that we've already got in resources you know by a by a significant margin uh the directors have put a lot of money into it and in the uh in the recent rights issue they've taken up all of their entitlements so um yeah we're putting our money where our where our mouth is and uh we're backing it certainly and mark you know you, i guess a couple of points here you said that there are a lot of majors around uh and they are certainly looking for those mega projects i'd imagine that bhp is not looking for a Five million dollar project. They want a five billion dollar project, so to speak. And then when you look at your your company, I know we have to be careful with what we say about valuations, but we can talk about that six hundred eighty thousand tons. And where is your market cap kind of currently sitting around? Market caps around five six million dollars. So you know, as I said, the cheapest uh, stock in the world on copper metrics. And if you believe the copper price is going to be in short supply. This is one of the best places to invest in copper. Um, Absolutely. For sure. And then also, I guess, specifically with you, Mark, given your background, as you said, you're an accountant, you've worked all over the world. Uh, I'd imagine that you have a also a strong network with a lot of the other majors in South, in South America. Is that correct? Like the BHPs and so forth? Look, we've worked with, you know, the, the people we've worked with before who now work with some of these other companies. So yes, we've got a, we've got a good network and, uh, 
we've we've got the right contacts to uh, to make the approaches at the right time. Yes, no, no, I, I, absolutely. And also, can you just let investors know a little bit about the historical work that's already been done here? You've drilled a, a, a heck of a lot of drilling considering your market cap, isn't that right? It's certainly over 50,000 square meters, I believe. Or 50, 60, 60, 000, or 60 kilometers, 60,000 meters of drilling has been done on right. this project. Um, you know, it was drilled initially in 2012 and then it, it hit a hiatus for many, many years. And, um, you know, fortunately, investors today are coming in at well below cost of drilling. And, um, you know, where else do you get that opportunity where someone else has sunk the cost and you're coming in at a, you know, at a fraction of it, you know, whatever it is, an eighth or a, in that order of magnitude of what's been sunk in the project. So um, plenty of upside and, uh, and, and a lot of the, the, uh, the risk has been taken out of it because we've got so much data and drilling already done right and that gives you the confidence and as you said you know valuation uh using a parallel that a lot of investors will know within real estate or property uh people always say that you can't go wrong you know buying below replacement cost so to speak yes uh, exactly yeah yeah so it's yeah. the same parallel now mark also just turning a little bit more towards manganese you yes. also have that in the portfolio as well at las pumas can you yes. describe that project a little bit, please? Sure. So this, this was the, the project that the company founded on. So, you know, for our market cap, Los Primos alone has had probably 20 million spent on it. Um, you know, it's, it's a standalone project by itself and uh, gets a bit forgotten. But with the, the EV revolution is really starting to change the metrics around that. So, um it was discovered by the company in 20, oh, 2006, seven. Uh, it's in Northern Chile and um, it's a 23 million ton deposit. Uh, it's, it had a, a scoping study put, to, put out on it and um, the manganese price collapsed and it kind of sat in the, in the company. We just hung on to it, waiting for the, the, uh, the markets and, and opportunity to turn, which it is now because Manganese sure. is a key component in in uh, the EV revolution and and renewables. It's critical in batteries, and um, they're looking to use more manganese because there's more of it and, and a bit less lithium, which is quite high priced. So this project's coming to its own, and 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 luckily our project has the cryptomalane type of wall which is ideally suited towards manufacturing of high purity manganese which is a you know a critical cathode material there's no production of of high purity manganese hpmsm in north america and uh, we're not far from north america in northern chile so we're doing some test work at the moment with uh with an expert engineering manganese firm called MN Energy and uh, progressing that along to uh, firm up the the metallurgical characteristics to be able to produce HBMSM and so that work is is moving along a bit quicker now and um, we expect to see some more news out on that over the next six months. And is that the key event in your mind that investors should be looking for from Las Pumas? Oh, look, there's a range of things. Obviously, that that test work is part of it, but we're also now starting to approach bigger companies who may want to be involved in the in the project as well. Um, yeah, we're a small company, so trying to run two large projects is uh, you know it, that's a challenge. So expensive. We, it, yeah, well, it's 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 more um, getting spending the least amount of money to get the maximum value, and um, and this one's a development project, so um, you know whether we bring a partner in or or we get partners in who want to fund it through through the company, those those options are all on the table. Right, and, and so it, it's as much. I said another way, it's as much in the suite of the C suite as as much as it is on the ground. What's going to happen? Yes, that's right. Exactly. Look, we're early in the in the uh, in the space on this one, um, and we've got the right product. It's close to a port. It's close to North America. 
So, you know, there's a lot of demand for it. It's just been overlooked. And uh, as we do the test work and prove that it can make high purity manganese, then that interest will follow quite significantly, I'm hoping. Yes, no, certainly, Mark. And again, you know, I keep coming back to that point. I, I can't help but think about your market capitalization versus the what you already have proven that goes beyond even just your location, so to speak, and, and the scale, but it's also where you're where you are. And that's why I'm asking so many questions about what's going to happen in 2023. Yeah, look, it'll be a catalyst year, um, crystal ball gazing, but uh, we, we've We've done the hard work over the last couple of years in in getting a, an understanding of the assets and and the potential, and uh, we're moving towards more of a uh, realization of value year. So, uh, you know, this it's going to be an exciting phase over the next six to twelve months. Absolutely. Hey, Mark. Unfortunately, we have to keep these interviews short. But before we go, if there are one or two points about Southern Hemisphere mining, you would like every investor to know what would those points be we're in the copper business and and we're the, one of the cheapest copper stocks on any stock exchange in the world compared to our copper resources so um watch this space absolutely mark and 2023 hopefully is the year to unlock that value absolutely thank you greg thanks mark really appreciate your time and definitely be in touch thank you Bye-bye. Thanks for watching another episode of 18 Minutes with 1A Markets. And don't forget, if you want access to thousands of capital raises, sign up at 180markets.com.au and you'll get access to our very next capital raise. Thanks for watching.